In my last video, I showed you how to make a fill in the blanks module in PowerPoint. In this video, I will show you how to have multiple blanks in one single slide. I also have a new premium template for this fill in the blanks game. More information about that at the end of the video. So let us get started. So let me take this slide and duplicate it. And I'll bring this slide as question number one. Now let me type my question. So these are my full new questions. I need to add this active Excel men text box in each of them. But before we do that, go to shape format and click on selection pane. We need to rename AA as AA1, AA2, AA3 and AA4 for these corresponding four questions. And similarly, we need to do that for CA. CA1 to CA4 and we have to rename these two boxes in all the six question slides that we have. So for example in slide number 3, this active X element AA should be renamed as AA1, the correct answer CA should be renamed as CA1. You can just double click it and rename it. Now instead of doing this manually for all your slides, we can write a macro which will do the job for us. So go to developer and click on view code. Let me make a subroutine called sub change name. So the first thing is renaming this AA active X element as AA1. So let me copy this and paste it here. And instead of object.value, we will have object.name and under double quotes it will be AA1. Now copy the syntax for CA shape and paste it here. So the shape CA, its name will become CA1. Perfect. Now we need to set the slide number. We have question slides from number 2 to number 7. So we can make a loop. For i equal 2 to 7 and the value for slides will be i. Next i. So first the value of i will be 2. Then after next i, i value becomes 3. Then slide 3's shape changes its name. And then the next i is run again. Then i becomes 4. So slides 4 shapes change name. But now in slide number 3, we have already renamed it as AA1 and CA1. So that will cause an error because there is no such shape as AA and CA for this code to rename. So if I click on play, this subroutine will show that item AA not found. So to fix this error, we can add on error statement. So on error, let's assume next. So this basically ignores the warning and goes to the next value of i. So let me play this again. And now if you see the selection pane, you will notice that all the shapes have changed their name. Now go to slide number 2. This is our a1, so just place it accordingly. Now copy paste this by Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And this should be renamed as AA2. So go on the top and rename it as AA2. Also a neat trick in PowerPoint is instead of copy pasting, hold down your control key and just drag one over here. So you are able to duplicate it very quickly. And this name has to be AA3. Now just press control in your keyboard and drag one over here. And this one has to be AA4. Now we need to do the same with CA. So press control and drag one over here, drag once more drag once more so we have four different answers now we need to rename all of this moody has to be ca1 it is ca1 clump has to be ca2 so let me take the highlighted shape and change its name to ca2 click on messy and that has to be ca3 bolt has to be ca4 so let us go back to our codes so first thing is initialize we are clearing the value of AA in the slides 2 to 6. But since we added a new slide, it will be from slides 2 to 7. Since we have shapes from AA1 to AA4, we need to add one more for loop which can be for A equal 1 to 4. We are having 4 because that is the maximum number of blanks in a slide. If you had 5 blanks, you would have to type here 5. So now we need to change the name of the shape to AA and a. A refers to 1, 2, 3 and 4. So AA1 to AA4. Go to your next line and type next A. However, this code will produce an error. Let me show you an example. Let me click on play. And it shows that item AA2 is not found. Because slide number 3 definitely does not have AA2. So we need to add on error let's assume next. So now let me just go to one of the question slides and type something here and click on escape. 
if I play this subroutine, this value has to disappear. And it does. Perfect. So right now we are finding out what is the current slide number. Instead of doing that, we can just set the current slide. And once we set the current slide, we need not have this lengthy code. So what we need to do is dim CS as slide. CS represents the current slide. So we are setting the current slide as whatever slide is being shown in the slideshow window. So I'm in slide number 3 and if I go to slideshow mode and run that code, it will show that I am in slide number 3. And that slide number 3 is stored in the variable called CS. And the value of CS changes according to the slide we are in. If I go to slide number 4, CS will become slide number 4. So now instead of having active presentation dot slides and lighting the slide number, we can just put CS dot shapes. So the shape AA in CS is going to be referred in this case. I can do the same here. Instead of having such a big line, I can just put CS. And now I can delete these three lines because it is unnecessary to us. So now we need to add a similar fall A loop in this case also because we have multiple blanks in a single slide. So fall A equal 1 to 4. Remember, I am typing 4 because the maximum number in my slide is 4. If I had 5 blanks or 10 blanks, you would have to type the new value here. The shape A and A and the shape C A and A are in an if condition. So if they both are correct, then message box should be correct, but we should not go to the next slide so quickly. So we have the for loop for A equal 1 to 4. So the loop ends here, so type next A. And just before the loop, we can have an integer called collect blank and the value for collect blank can be set to 0. So now in the case your answer is correct, the value of collect blank must increase by plus 1. So now we need to find the number of blanks because sometimes it will be 4, sometimes it might be 1. If you wish to make more questions, it can be 2, 3 or even 10. And the maximum number of blanks must be typed here. Fall A equal 1 to maximum number of blanks. So the number of blanks can be set as A. So now imagine this code is running in this slide number 3. So it has only one blank, A A1 and one C A1. So the code is running, the value of A is 1. This works this works and we go to next A and it shows A equal 2 but the shape AA2 does not exist so an error comes. So if an error comes we need to put on error but this time we are not saying resume next we are saying go to check answer. So if an error pops up within this loop the loop is ignored whatever is typed here that is going to run when we go to check answer. So in check answer we just need to see if the number of correct blanks is equal to number of blanks. So if there are full blanks and there are full correct blanks, that means the student got all the answers correct. So we are going to the next slide if the number of correct blanks is equal to the number of blanks. And also in these two message box, we can refer to which answer is correct. Is it AA1 or is it AA2? To do that, add a comma here and you can choose the type of your box. For correct answer, we can choose VB information and in the title, just type answer and a. So it will show that your answer 1 is correct or is your answer 2 correct. So just copy this and paste it in the case of wrong answer and instead of VB information type VB critical. Also you need not actually declare an integer even if you do not declare it the code is still going to work. So let me close this and let us test out the game. So let me start the game. So let me get all the answers wrong. I just put some random values and I click on next. It shows answer 1, long answer, try again. Answer 2, long. Answer 3 is long. Answer 4 is also long. <laughs> so let me get few of the questions correct. Donald Clump, Lionel Messi. But the last answer is long. So if I click on next, answer 1 is correct. Answer 2, correct. Answer 3, correct. Answer 4 is long. Let me type the correct answer now. So it shows all the four are correct. Now here also it will work in the same way. So if I type a long answer, it will show answer 1 is long. And if I type the correct answer, it will show that the answer 1 is correct. So this is my premium fill in the blanks template. As a teacher, you have full customization settings. You can choose the time limit, 
the amount of points to be awarded for the correct answer for a long answer, the minimum percentage for grade, and you can customize by enabling or disabling features. If you want to uh, randomize the order of questions, you can do that by just typing Y. So you need not touch the codes at all, you just need to change the values here. And on the other side of the coin, for the student, the student can type the name and location here and they can go through all these questions. And if they want, they can also review the question later. And at the end, they can also see their result, how many collect, how many long, what grade they are getting. And an Excel sheet is also generated. So let me play this template and we will get an idea. The so name Bhavish, location India. So now I can answer these questions. Let me get this answer long. Uh, so let me put sad next. Now if I do not know the answer, I can click on review later. So I can leave you the question later. Now let me get all these answers correct. Now I can also hear sound and then type what is written. This is very useful for English teachers. Umbrella. So the word is umbrella. I need to write the spelling of umbrella. Perfect. Next. Name the flower. Maybe I want to review the question. So let me put this on review. And now I can review the questions which I have not answered. It is question number two and question number five. So let me go to question number two now. So let me try to answer this. This kid is plain. I put the correct answer. Now I need to answer question number five. Name the flower. Let me put the long answer. Let me put the long answer. And click on next. Calculate result. Calculate result. And now I can save the Excel sheet while I want. I'm saving it in documents. Excel sheet has generated. And even my results have generated with the custom grade. Now we can check our Excel sheet which was generated. Here you can see the answer which was attempted by your student. And along with the correct answer. If the correct answer was happy, I had typed sad. So that is the long answer. And then it shows which one was long and which one was correct. And now you can also see the amount of time which the student took in answering the question. So if you are interested, you can certainly check out this template from my website. If you want, you can purchase it by filling up this form. It has a lot of features. I hope you like it. If you have any doubts, contact me. Thank you very much. Have a great day.